Okay, let's start uh, the second video. And in this video, I'm going to consider an actual uh, portfolio allocation. We are going to mix up these two uh, financial assets, A and B, and we will, we will study how their covariance uh, affects the risk, the risk of the portfolio. By the way, in general, in in the in the in the general theory in finance, of course, the expected return is the most important measure to evaluate to to evaluate a financial portfolio. But we are focusing more on the covariance, so we are going to ignore to ignore the the effect of expected returns. I intentionally I made. Uh, made the means, the, the, the expected returns from two financial assets equal. So, uh, like for any mi mix of these two assets, the expected return is always 10%, right? So expectation does not play any role. Expected return uh, is not a concern in making up a, a portfolio between these two guys, two assets. Okay, so then we only need, we only concerned we are only concerned about the risk or which is the variance or the standard deviation so risk is usually measured by the measure of variability so i'm going to consider variance here uh, or usually standard deviation or equ equivalent they are equivalent so and in the end as you may guess as you can you could guess uh, negative covariance is very helpful to diversify the risk because when A is doing well, uh, it can cover B's performance. When A is not doing well, uh, the it, it can be compensated by B. When A is not doing well, B is doing well and vice versa. So they complement each other. So uh, overall risk can be uh, diversified by allocating your uh, investment into two two financial assets which have negative covariance so that's the point of risk allocation uh, risk diversification in our example so let's first let's simply consider that you are investing on both a and b so it's a little bit so actually the return is not calculated in this way but let me put it this way uh, so when you when you invest $100 on A, you get $20 or $8 or $4. And when you invest uh, $100 on B, you get $6, $10, and $14 from B. And I am going to consider a portfolio. It's actually not a por it's a portfolio. Uh, simply investing $100, $100 on A and another $100 on B. So you have you are investing two hundred dollars, but you put one hundred dollars and one hundred dollars on each asset, which is the simplest possible example because uh, the return from the total portfolio is simply the sum of both. So just to have this simple uh, relationship, I'm going to assume that you are investing the same amount on A and B. So. And then let's think about this portfolio, portfolio X. I will call this X. When the economy is in boom with 25% probability, your portfolio will yield 20 plus six dollars. So 20 from A, six from B. So 20 plus six uh, is your total return, total profit. Uh, so $26 is your total return from this portfolio. Similarly, in the normal state, you get $18 in total, and in recession, also $18 in total. So, you have uh, 26, 18, and 18 as the result of the portfolio. This is the, the probability distribution for this portfolio. And then we can calculate its risk. Now let's calculate the risk of its portfolio. But with, before doing the algebra, let's guess it. Let's test your intuition. So I, I did uh, algebra uh, and I 
if you calculate the variance of A and variance of B, you will get 36 and 8. So the variance of A is 36 and variance of B is 8. So it means A is more risky. A is more risky having greater variance and B is less risky, more safe uh, asset. And so anyhow, then given these two uh, variances numbers, what would you expect as the variance of the portfolio X? How would you expect this? Just guess. You don't need to do any algebra. We are going to do the algebra soon. So, 3, 2, 1. Uh, there is, you don't need to get it right, but usually I would expect something like C because you are investing on both of them. So the overall risk should be greater. And uh, most intuitively, it may be the sum of both because anyhow, you are, you, you are investing twice more than uh, before. So 36 is the variance when you invest $100 on A and 8 is the variance, the risk, when you invest $100 on B. But now in this portfolio, you are investing $200. So, so uh, the, the, the risk should be greater in that sense because you, your investment size is larger and also you are equally, equally investing on A and B. So, I, so it's easy, maybe you may have guessed uh, the variance would be something like this. But let's see, when you calculate, when you calculate the variance from this probability distribution table, so the probability is the same, three market state, states and uh, the corresponding outcomes, 26, 18, and 18. And uh, the expected return is 20, because uh, as I said, we are investing twice more than $200, so the expected return is 10 from A and 10 from B. So your portfolio's expected return is some of them, right? Uh, so using this expected value, you can calculate the variance. First, take the de deviation, uh, subtract the mean, 26 minus 20, 18 minus 20, 18 minus 20, and then square them square, so 36, and minus 2 squared, minus 2 squared, and then use the probability as a weight, and multiply probability, so 36 times 0 0.25, 4 times 0.5, 4 times 0.25, so probabilities are multiplied to the squared deviations, squared deviations multiplied by probabilities, so these are weighted squared deviations, 9 to 1. Remember, the variance is the average of weighted squared deviations, the sum of weighted squared deviations. That is the definition of the variance. So, the variance of your portfolio is 12, only 12. So, think about this. This is surprising because it's even smaller than uh, the original variance, not only smaller than the variance, but imagine that if you invest $200 on B, then your, uh, so if you multiply 2, so if the variance of 2 times B would be 4 times 8, 32. So even if you increased, you increased the, 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 the size of the investment, but actually the risk does not increase that much. It's only changed it from it changed it from eight to twelve, and as I said, this variance is smaller than the variance if you invested two hundred dollars on B. So your combination is even safer than investing everything on the safest asset. Right? B is safer than A. So you are mixing up safe asset B and risky asset A, and then you get a new portfolio. This portfolio, even if it includes risky asset, still it is uh, less, riskier, less risky than 
investing two hundred dollars, investing everything on uh, the same amount on B, the safe asset. This is something very surprising. Of course, this is the result of a negative covariance, and uh, as I said, the risk is reduced. It's a diversification, right? Uh, so, to say, uh, to in general, we can formulate the idea by this uh, formula. Again, we are going to consider a kind of re linear relationship, but it is not linear relationship because A and B both are random variables. When we study the linear relationship, there was only one random variable. At that time, one random variable is transformed into another random variable, right? And you just multiply and add some constants. Constants are not random. They are fixed constants. However, in this case, what we are doing here is we have two random variables, two original random variables, and by adding them, we get a new random variable. So this is a little bit different from the, the linear transformations we learned earlier. Anyhow, in this case, when you sum two random variables, the mean, again, behaves very well. Uh, mean, uh, the expected value of x, the sum, equals to the sum of the expected values, right? Expected value of the sum equals the sum of expected values, which is very nice. You may think it's obvious, but actually it's not that obvious because like, for example, variance is not that simple. So variance of x is not simply variance of a plus variance of b. So variance of the sum is not the sum of two variances, but you have to have two times covariance. Uh, you can you, you can find similarity between this guy, uh, this equation to the expansion of quadratic form. So remember, variance variance is a kind of squared uh, random variable. It's an expected value of squared uh, deviations. So it resembles a lot. It has many properties related to the square. So for example, when you sum and then square then you have, so this is square of the sum, and then it's not simply sum of two squares, but you have to add a cross product, two times cross product, and that cross product is captured by the covariance. So the, the structure is very similar, and yes, it's this structure when you derive, if you, if you prove this uh, formula, the main key step is to use this expansion. Basically, this is why we have two times covariance. So it is coming from this guy. So you can intuitively understand what's going on. And the idea is the cross product, cross product, and in our example, it was negative. So, so the, the variance of the sum is smaller than the sum of the variances because it is negative, right? That's our result. And uh, of course, the standard deviation follows from the variance formula. Uh, square root takes square root. And we are going to use the standard deviation as the measure because it's more common. Standard deviation is a more common measure of risk. But it's not convenient because we have to bring the square root all the time. And now we are going to use uh, this formula uh, later from now on. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here and we'll continue uh, uh, from this property. So, thank you.